and uh, more things that uh, don't change, right? So uh, this is a good thing. The Java community process, more than 1,000 members, more than 300 JSRs uh, over the last uh, couple of years, has been an incredibly powerful force to focus the priorities and focus the values on the Java platforms, and the JCP will continue. There's no reason why an announcement like this should do anything but add interest and value to the work being done by this important group of people. And in fact, just last week, um, there was a vote and approval of uh, an important JSR, which is JSR 270. Every time I, I use JSR numbers, it's, I feel like it's joke by, jokes by numbers. But uh, uh, JSR 270 is the overarching or umbrella JSR for uh, the next release of uh, Java SE. And the organization <laughs> unanimously, thank you, approved it. And so uh, we now uh, plan to release um, Sun's version of Java SE next month. And so stay tuned for another big announcement coming then. But I, I want to give you some sense of how the process works, which is, you know, it's a fully uh, transparent uh, voting method. Uh, you get to see the votes and comments of all the participants. And you should really go to... Uh, jcp.org and go take a look at their comments and go take a look at the methodology they use for contribution. This is really an opportunity to uh, take another look at an important organization that drives uh, value in the Java platform. And so in that regard, when there's feedback um, and voting, uh, many of the voters comment on the, uh, the value and uh, uh, capabilities of the technology. So let me highlight one in this voting area. Let me see if I could read this to you. This is a, a comment from IBM that I want to read that I think really underscores what we're doing here today. Um, we support open source as a licensing model for contributing in the JCP and would hope others would support this direction. Well, I guess today we do. So uh, IBM gets their wish in the context of the JSR 270 vote. So let's uh, move on just a little bit more. Let's just move on quickly. <laughs> so um, you've heard me um, comment on compatibility. I think you've heard uh, Jonathan comment on compatibility. Uh, we have uh, gone to the mat in public forums about compatibility. It is the core value proposition for Java. You know, a multi-platform, internet-wide, uh, server to uh, smart card implementation is all about the internet distribution and execution of value of applications, of content. And so uh, being confident that it, you write it once and it runs everywhere is never more important than today when distribution is likely to go, you know, go through the roof. And so um, I uh, want to underscore that we uh, took actions with the community. We chose the values of the license to ensure this. And in that regard, I'd like to um, show you, you know, the comments of a number of industry uh, experts and industry luminaries who I think all focus on the value of today's um, announcement and the value of compatibility. So with that, to the video. The choice of GPL, I think, is going to really rock some people back. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bold move, and it's one that's going to have a lot of far-reaching consequences. For starters, it will mean that uh, Java will get incorporated into uh, Linux distributions like Ubuntu, uh, which are you know very much focused around the GPL and uh, and the like, and that will harness I think uh, you know a, a large group beyond the core Java community. It also means that uh, there are as I said these communities uh, uh, that feel very strongly about uh, completely free and open licenses uh, are going to take another look at Java, particularly in Brazil and Latin America. We have a very active Java community that have been established in the past 10 years. Brazil is the fifth worldwide populated country. So it's an incredible, huge market. Part of the question is how, is how to give access of this low-income population to the high-end and to the benefits of technology. So open source, open standards, and open data representation are strategies to disseminate broadly these technologies, avoiding monopolies uh, and closed markets. Sun moving Java SE to the open source community is a, is, is a, is a big day in, in, the, in the industry right now, in the open source industry. Linux has moved very, very rapidly from, from a server perspective 
but from a desktop perspective there has there hasn't been a complete solution this is really the uh, the missing piece of the puzzle to move the desktop much more rapidly and really give uh, partners and customers and, and developers uh, uh, the beginning of a great alternative to the to a .NET framework I see the open source Java announcement as a, as a great opportunity for Red Hat and Sun to work together on common open source solutions that can benefit both our, our, our businesses, our common customers, and our common developers as well. So I think this is a, a great opportunity to start to bring that together. As Java became one of the most important languages for the expression of ideas about technology of programming in the last decade. The question of Java's freedom, whether it could be used freely and made part of free software projects, has been a crucial question. Sun's policy of GPLing Java, which we are celebrating now, is an extraordinary achievement in returning programming technology to that state of freely available knowledge. Sun has now GPL'd hardware designs. Sun is GPL'ing Java. That's an extraordinary vote of confidence in this way of sharing information. And we in the free software world are very pleased and very flattered to see Sun taking its own very valuable and very important products and agreeing with us that they will be more advantageous to Sun as well as to the rest of the community if they are shared under these rules. Very little else to add after uh, comments and endorsements like that. I just think this is, uh, this is really one of those days where everything comes together for, uh, for all the right reasons. It's uh, really quite fabulous. So I want to take a moment to uh, offer my thanks. Um, you know, there are people who have been involved in Java in the community uh, across the industry for many years, but uh, no more so than the teams uh, in engineering and in marketing and in uh, um, all aspects of the company that have driven Java for the last 10 plus years, starting with James Gosling, the inventor of the technology. Um, I really want to offer my thanks to, to everybody here. This has been a very remarkable 10-year run. Um, again, I think this is going to be the, the next knee in the curve of the whole program. Um, you have done absolutely incredible work. When we, uh, uh, when we said what we did in May, I think there were a lot of eyebrows raised, not only outside the company, but inside. Um, but people, uh, you know, got in line and just put their heads down and did just fabulous work, as evidenced by that uh, overnight overcommit uh, uh, comment. I also want to th uh, thank uh, one other individual besides James. James, you, you all know and love and has been responsible for you know, the, the core of what we're talking about today. But I also want to talk about um, uh, Graham, or uh, as I said in, uh, in litigation, Dr. Graham Hamilton. He has been a driving force in the program for 10 plus years. He is omnipresent, has been uh, everywhere at the program. Uh, he has uh, both been uh, charming and intense, uh, really an unusual and incredibly valuable uh, member of the Java community in Inside and Outside Sun. And I really want to pass along my thanks to uh, Graham for all of his help as well. So with that, um, one more surprise announcement. You thought you knew all the things we were going to say today, but there actually is one more thing to do. Um, Every major open source program needs a mascot. And you probably know of some mascot that's been affiliated with uh, Java for some time. But like any major open source program, the uh, mascot should be made available to all broadly as well. So I want to announce one more thing, which is the open sourcing of Duke. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And this is a, a no kidding announcement. Uh, actually, Duke will be uh, modifiable and available under the BSD license, fully available for those to use. Really go forward and, and use Duke as part of the program. We really compel you to make him or it, uh, yeah, Duke, uh, part of the, uh, uh, of, of the whole you know, community activity. So actually, if you go to uh, duke.dev.java.net and click there, you'll find an opportunity to buy a Duke powered t shirt. And so, uh, Let's just have uh, Duke uh, go for a ride here for a second. Where is Duke? Yes, thank you. Yes, <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so by the way, uh, 
Uh, you know, James is home uh, recovering. He's doing just fine. But James is the one who does all of this, right? So uh, while inventing Java, while traveling all the world, world being a developer advocate, he's also creating Duke, Duke animations, Duke wireframes, Duke everything, Duke t-shirts. Um, so uh, we wish him all well. So with that, uh, the last image, of course, is uh, Duke and the time gate. I guess we're not going to have that one. Uh, yeah, Duke is back. So um, Duke is here to, you know, pass through the time machine and uh, it is now, the future is the present, and uh, it is now all open. And so with that, I really want to thank you for your time. Go to these websites, go check it out, go uh, start hacking into the code. It's all there for you now. So with that, thank you very much.